Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, it is my pleasure to introduce you our next speaker. His name is Sondre Bielas, and he will present you the project called Lieberstadt. And it's a very interesting project. I, I, f I found I revealed this project maybe two or maybe three years ago, and um, I'm especially interested in this uh, like a freedom freedom cities and uh, freedom freedom places like Liberland. Uh, last week I came from from Panama from a community which is which is called Kaluyala, which is independent free city or free village inside of jungle for, forest and I'm especially uh, surprised that uh, such community exists in Norway maybe maybe I can tell you more like story about like why I'm surprised a um, few years ago maybe two or three years ago I visited one anarcho-capitalist conference anarcho Pulkov and and the most people from Europe at this conference were from Norway, and I was totally shocked. Why are you, why are you you are here, guys? I really don't understand. You know, like in Norway, they have like a perfect government, like perfect services, everything, and there are so many anarchists in uh, in Norway. And now they explain me that it's not so true, <laughs> and probably also will explain us like why it's necessary to create a, your own free city. So welcome. Oh, thank you. So uh, welcome everybody to my talk about how to build our own city. My name is uh, Sodner, as I mentioned, and um, we founded uh, Liber Liberstad, me and uh, my colleague uh, John. And it was uh, two years ago, on the 1st of June, we actually established the city. That's when we took over the property where we we're planning on building this, this potential future city. So that's our uh, celebration every year. So we're already on the property. So this is a photo from, uh, from the last news article about uh, Liverstad. It's me, uh, me and John Holmesland. Uh, we're standing here in, in the Anarcho Park. And it's a park that will look very similar to the, the illustration here. It's going to be an anarchist day. It's going to be very visible from Google Earth. And there's three pathways. So the one, one of them is going to have information about the philosophy behind voluntarism, anarcho-capitalism. The other one is going to be all about economics, and in the middle, uh, in the A, there's going to be plaques uh, and information about uh, some of the philosophers behind uh, the, the projects and ideas here. So, what is Liberstad? It's a project to establish uh, Norway's first private city. And um, by that, it means that all properties and all services are private and delivered by private actors in this economy. And uh, it is built on the uh, philosophy of anarchism, non-aggression principle, and, and voluntarism. And th these are, are things that uh, can be very hard to explain to people in Norway, because there's a lot of new concepts and information to, to people. So one of the things I also ha always have to clear up with people is like, this is not uh, a separate state. While it would be fantastic to be able to have our own state, create our own laws and everything, uh, that, will be, uh, that will be much harder. Uh, I mean, we're, we're a very big supporter of the project Liberland. They're a good friend of ours. We actually have dedicated a property where we're going to build their embassy. So Liberland is going to have their Norwegian embassy in, uh, in Liberstad. Uh, but we figured out that we, to do this, we need to do it, uh, do it in an existing state. Uh, our end goal is obviously to be able to do something like an uh, economic free zone and uh, a special administrative zone. And John had a, a talk with Titus Gable from uh, freeprivatecities.com just two, uh, two days ago. And he's also very supportive of the project. And he's also a, a person that will help us a lot when we move uh, further into the future where we can sort of. Uh, start demanding uh, a different set of rules, maybe, for this uh, project and this re region. 
So I always had to tell the people that uh, we need to follow the Norwegian laws, because that's, that's the first thing people say, like, you know, say we're going to have an internal market, and say, oh, but you're going to pay taxes, right? You have to follow Norwegian law, what if someone's killed, and, and so forth. So, of course, we need to do this uh, to begin with, but it's, it's a very important principle that was mentioned by Louis yesterday in a talk here. It was so uh, well sp uh, said, the thing he said. He said that like, most people don't understand the laws in the country where they live in. And I need to take the consequences when I do some acts here in, in, in Czechia. And, and I don't know the laws. Nobody told me the laws when I came here. So should I be punished uh, as much as another, another citizen here? I don't know. But one thing we need to have, we need to have a full set of uh, regulations. So we, don't, uh, we can avoid having to refer to the Norwegian law. So let's say uh, we need to have a law, you can't store atomic bombs on your property. That's probably not legal in Norway, uh, but we also need to have that in our own uh, laws, and it's going to be a citizen contract. We're not going to have a constitution, but it will be a, a private contract between the city company and you as an individual. Uh, so this is a video that we recorded, uh, I think it was in, uh, in June, right after we, uh, we took over the property. So before, uh, before we took over the property, we actually uh, rented it for one year. Uh, so we were able to show it to people uh, that came visiting uh, to show the area and everything. We spent uh, a little bit, I'll come a little bit back to the background uh, also. So one of the things, if you ever come up and visiting us, in, uh, this is in South Norway. As you see, it's a fantastic forest, uh, landscape, nature and everything. And one of the things I experience every time I go up there, we live uh, today uh, like a 35 minutes drive fr from Liberstad. John is living up there permanently with, with his family, his wife and two kids. But when we come up there, it's like you forget that you have your phone in your pocket. You, you completely go off the grid and disconnect because it's so fantastic being up there. And I'm doing everything from coding, a uh, blockchain project that we're working on. I'm also doing construction, painting, we're doing everything. And uh, it's like John is working every single day, eight to eight, every day, uh, together with another uh, guy we have up there. And uh, it is so much fun for him because we're able to do, if you get tired of painting, you can go do something else uh, for a while. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the farmhouse in the middle, and the house behind there is the, uh, the permanent residency where, where John is living today. So a little bit about philosophy. Um, the more principles behind Liberstad is uh, comes from philosophers and economists and thinkers that most of you already know. But when I talk with people in, in Norway, uh, most people have never heard about these people. And I think it was so fantastic. The first news article uh, in a local uh, newspaper about this project, he uh, started digging and asking about anarcho-capitalism and Murray Rothbard. I mean, it was published in a newspaper. There was this big side note on the side of the article where it was explaining what is anarcho-capitalism and who is Murray Rothbard and a little bit about the books he has written. And th that's the first time ever those kind of words and definitions and information have been on, on press in, in Norway and that was just uh, fantastic. And both me and John consider ourselves like voluntarists. We also tend to use the, the word definition uh, anarcho-capitalist among people that know it. But most of the time I just call myself an anarchist. I, unfortunately, I forgot to have a photo of my car here, car here but it says Anarchy on uh, the license plates of my car. And my wife, she didn't like it too much. She thought, oh, you're not really anonymous. So she, so she said, you should rather get another plate that says Anonymous. So, but, but if, uh, just a uh, fun side note is that I was out driving in South Norway, and the same day I get a message on Facebook. Hello, and this might be a very weird request, but I saw your car and he searched me up on the National Registry, for my name, and he found out that I was an anarchist. And he was an anarchist as well, and he was just living like uh, 40 minutes away from where we are living. 
So it's actually an enabler to, to build a bigger community. And this is just uh, to illustrate that all of us here, we're working towards getting more and more freedom, but we have a huge machinery of aggression against us. And it's very hard to compete against people that have guns. You just have to follow their rules, whatever they, they do. But it is, it is a, a struggle, and, and that's what we're, we're doing. And, and we're just trying to, to carve ourselves a little bigger piece of, uh, of freedom. And that is also the slogan for Liberstad. It is a little piece of freedom. So this is a photo from the first article. As you can see, there, was, uh, there hadn't been any activity on the farm for uh, uh, quite a few years. And the, uh, the forest was uh, uh, well overgrown, as you can see. So the history started with uh, John. Uh, I met, uh, John was anonymous online. Uh, and I met him probably a year before we started uh, with the Liberstad ID. Uh, now we discussed maybe a, a few years before that, but I, I invited him to meet him. Uh, I didn't know his name when I was inviting him, just, just go here and meet. And then after we met, we started forming, forming this ID, and John had already started thinking about he wanted to move to a farm, get off the city, uh, out of the stressful life there. Uh, but he figured it was pretty boring moving alone uh, with your family to the rural countryside, uh, going away from your friends and everything. So he started thinking we need to do something bigger. We should do more than just us. So we got together, started thinking about this. And then we also uh, did a lot of uh, research, finding the property. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of things we needed with this property. It couldn't be uh, agricultural land where you can grow food. Because that's, that's the same as holy land in Norway. We have a little, very little uh, arable land. So it had to be forests and mountains, basically. So it's a property. It's very big. And it's mostly just forest uh, and, and uh, mountains. And that is also important because we, we need to go through the uh, zoning regulation of this property to be able to allow it to build those uh, cabins uh, if we want to. We also learned a lot about other projects around the world. I almost almost moved to uh, Gold Gulch, Chile myself, uh, but uh, we all know how that ended. But uh, we also wanted to take uh, lessons learned from from other projects. And uh, then in 2015, we made a website. We launched the ID because we figured like we have no idea if this is something that people want to. And uh, uh, so we we couldn't take the risk of just buying a property and then starting selling. We just Instead, invited people to take some of the risk with us. So it was very cheap uh, plots to buy, but it's obviously come uh, come with some, with some risk. So we did the pre-sale. It's a lot of interest. Uh, nothing similar have ever been done in Norway. And initially, we were accepting uh, property uh, properties with uh, fiat currency. But eventually, also we were able to, to, to we used BitPay in the beginning to take payments uh, with, with different cryptocurrencies. Um, and uh, we'd just like to say thank you to everybody that's supported our project uh, this thus far. I think there's at least uh, one or two, three property owners in Liberstad at the conference here uh, this weekend, which is fantastic. And uh, there's been a lot of interest, and this is a screenshot from our uh, statistics from a website from uh, 1st of December 2015. And we have a .com, like liberstad.com website, liberstad.no. And in total now we're uh, close to 1 million page views. And we have, uh, as you can see here, it's like we have around uh, half a million unique uh, visitors on our website. Initially, we had a lot of information about the philosophy and ideas and everything, everything just to get people sort of learn more about this because this is a new concept for, for most people. And people that have bought the property, properties, it's not only anarchists or voluntarists, but it's people that share the foundations and ideas about more freedom, uh, being able to take care of themselves uh, a little more. So it's... it's uh, we were able to sort of spread the information as well. And uh, John made this, uh, these graphics with uh, a meme from Ludwig, Ludwig uh, von Mises, which is just fantastic, and I uh, actually want to uh, tell it. So, all human progress always happened in a manner that a small minority begin to deviate. 
from the ideas and habits of the majority until finally their example inspired the others to take over the new way. And that is also what we're, we're doing here. We're doing this in a, as a small scale, an iterative process. We don't have any big investors. Uh, we don't have any big plans to big build huge constructions uh, in the beginning. But we're taking one step uh, at a time. So a little bit about the citizens now uh, that have purchased pro properties. We are now more than 125 property owners from uh, 33 or 34 countries. I, do, um, I think maybe Australia was the uh, 34 fourth uh, country. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, these are, these are individuals who share a lot of the same ideas. This is an old graphics, but it shows sort of the distribution of uh, property owners in, in Liberstad. Uh, we have people from, from South Africa, from Hong Kong, from China, from uh, all of Europe, from the US, uh, uh, and, um, and a lot of people are also from Brazil. So here are some photos from uh, both the, the summer party that we have. We have the uh, Liberstad uh, Freedom Festival every year. Next year we're changing it up to become uh, a week-long festival with uh, workshops, uh, presentations, talks, and training, everything. And uh, yeah, so these are some photos. At the bottom here, you can see uh, these are photos from John took the property owners on a trip uh, into the, uh, the area where they, where they will get their properties to build cabins. So a little bit about the property. These are some photos I took when he rented the property. And it's like uh, just serene, uh, fantastic nature. What you will see here is like on this photo here, you see it's completely grown uh, uh, forest here. But this is where we have the bar barracks today. So you will see some of the difference that have, that have happened. And this photo is from the, the lake on the top where we have the heart-shaped uh, island. And then on the top of this building, uh, that's where I took this photo. It's a panorama photo. And you can actually look down to Liberstad here. So this, this, uh, pro this, uh, this mountain here is part of the, the Liberstad property. And then this is down in the sort of uh, entrance area. You have the uh, Anarcho Park here. This is the old farmhouse. And this is where John is living. And this guy, he started hanging around uh, the property while we were working up there. And he, was, he wasn't afraid at all. So he was coming all the way up close to us when we were working there. And we, we gave him a name. And his name is Ludwig von Muses. <laughs> so this is uh, one of the first graphics that we showed of the property. Uh, shows we sort of separated it into different districts. So the uh, yellow one is the central district, sort of the city center. And then on the top, uh, and we're going to build an outdoor concert stage where we can have 4,000 people uh, coming in there for concerts. And part of the concept with Liberstad is that this is a bit outside the main city, but we want to be able to host people so they can stay there, have some cheap uh, options for, for, uh, for staying the night so they don't need to travel home after a party in an evening and also stay there for, for weekends and longer times. And then beside the city center, that's where we're going to have the camping site. Where people can uh, live with the RVs. And, and all the property owners, they of course have a free camping site until their uh, property is uh, sold. And then we have uh, the uh, cabin town and industry area as well. And we're going to build uh, a type of offices, especially uh, I want to uh, start incubator programs up in Liberstad to entice developers and startups and, and new tinkers to come together up there, be able to live cheaper than in the uh, outside society, and also have the, uh, the forest and a quiet uh, area around to focus on innovation and ideas. So this is a much de more detailed uh, sketch that we're working on uh, in the city center. Uh, it's in Norwegian, but uh, yeah. So a couple of uh, these we have. In the, this is the where we're driving in. So one of the things we want to do is we want to have the parking at the very, very beginning. So everybody should park the car, and then it's mostly car-free in the rest of the area. 
We have the road going down here, which will be the road that goes to the, the properties. And then we have also the anarcho par park that we're building here. This is a playground, big playground for, for children. And then these are the buildings that, we, uh, that is, exists already today. Uh, and as you saw in the first photo, the property is like two, two, uh, two separate ones. So we have an initial agreement to, to be able to buy some of the property in, in between here, so we get them connected to each other. And uh, yeah, this uh, at the bottom here is uh, we need to have our own uh, sewage and renovation in, in Liberstad, because we need to be as self-sufficient and self-sustained as possible. We obviously, we obviously won't have uh, neurosurgeons in Liberstad in the, in the immediate future, maybe in, uh, maybe in the, the long term, but we want to provide all uh, public services. So you're not going to be able to get public water up here. You're not going to be able to get public sewer. It has, it's, a uh, it's a private service that uh, we will building and, and provide, but it's not, you're not obligated to connect to this. If you just want to have a, a sewer, sewage tank on your property, you can do that. And then you can buy, for, uh, buy it as a service to get it emptied, and you can do go to any, any provider you want to do, uh, do that. So it's, uh, it's an evolving uh, city, we're doing it iteratively, uh, so the growth will be very natural and uh, gradual, uh, and at least to the, to the extent that is possible within the law. So what we've done so far is uh, uh, renovating the existing buildings. We haven't started any construction of new buildings, because uh, we need to, uh, unfortunately, of course, uh, supply uh, application to to do anything like that. This is another video. This is from August 2017. Uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to get uh, some donations and also got a, a big loan from a, a friend of mine to, uh, to buy the excavator. So we have this huge excavator up there well, and a big dumper, uh, dumper truck, a lot of other equipment. Um, uh, yeah. So this is uh, a video from uh, just after we, we, we bought, bought the property and uh, we started digging uh, as, as soon as possible after we bought the property. So the area you saw there, and that's the, the only area that uh, where we can go grow any food or anything like that um, today on, on this property. But hopefully, I think a lot of the property owners, they want to uh, work the earth on their own properties uh, and grow some food and vegetables uh, uh, by themselves. So uh, we at least try as, as, as good as possible to do what we can within the legal framework that is there. But we've had uh, two, three visits and sort of uh, reviews of stuff going up, uh, up there. And there's obviously uh, ways of understanding the law. Uh, we are obviously not uh, lawyers and, uh, and jurors. So it's obviously uh, we try to our best ability to to follow the laws that exist, but we were actually informed that we were, we're not even allowed to store uh, trees that we cut down and store them for winter storage. That is something actually we need to, to ask for permission and apply for. And I'm pretty sure 0% of Norwegian farmers ever ask the government to be allowed to, to put timber in, in, their, in their own properties. But obviously we will get scrutinized because this is a project that it's a fairly good amount of Norwegians knows about this product. We've been on uh, national news on 7 o'clock on Saturday, which is sort of the best airtime. It's been on the newspaper. We also have uh, New York Times has been asking us for a long time to come there, stay there a week to do a big uh, article. There was this uh, pretty big article in, um, in a Switch newspaper as well. Uh, just a month ago. 
So uh, we will get scrutinized, and people will uh, look at this project from many, many different angles. So we just need to do our best. So this is from the top, where we have this fantastic heart-shaped island. And this will hopefully maybe be able to be our water source in the, in the city. So I'll just mention there's two properties here. As you can see, that is not part of Liberstad today. It is holiday homes for some people uh, living close by. So there's the closest uh, permanent resident. He lives uh, a bit far down this uh, dirt road here. So in, the, in this area, there's no permanent uh, residents except uh, John. And there's also no highways. So there's like... Uh, uh, there's no noise and there's almost no airplanes going over. So there's photos of uh, some of the equipment that we purchased. So just having this excavator is like super, uh, a super good thing to have because it's much more effective than standing there with, with a shovel. And we also have other kinds of uh, uh, agriculture equipment. There's also a sawmill on the property that was already there when we, when we took it over. So, and this is fantastic to be able to create our own construction material. And we also, for all the stuff that can't be uh, made into materials, we make it into firewood that we can sell uh, uh, currently externally, but also eventually we can be able to sell it to some of the other property owners. This is a photo from uh, outside the city center where me and John were laying some bricks this summer. And uh, we're just going to have a big open fireplace here. It's going to be like a small intimate concert uh, stage on the top there. We want to focus a lot about, about around culture and entertainment and everything. So eventually we will have, uh, this will be the smallest stage and then we're going to have a big stage in here. And outdoor, it's going to be there. And then we have another building where we're going to build a restaurant and, and a sta stage as well. So there will be uh, four stages uh, where we'll be able to do uh, presentations and events such as this, but also more uh, music type of uh, events. And inside the, uh, inside the, um, the sawmill, we started constructing a, a separate room in there to be able to, to, uh, to insulate it, to be able to work there in the wintertime. And uh, I think uh, some of you maybe have seen uh, a few clips from the TV series uh, Parks and Recreation. Maybe heard about this character called Ron Swanson. And uh, we're going to have a silhouette photo of here, and then this is going to be the Ron Swanson woodshop. So uh, hopefully we will be able to get him to maybe retweet it or whatever to, to get some uh, exposure. And this is the barracks outside. It is temp temporary uh, barracks that we, we purchased. Uh, it was the stupidest, stupidest idea ever to buy these, these uh, barracks used because uh, we spent so much time renovating them and there was leakage and, and, um, and everything. So we should have instead just bought new ones. The government people are obviously not too happy about this because there's, uh, there's uh, a, 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 a shower here. Uh, it's a full bathroom, it's basically it's not something that me, we made, but it's like they're not too happy about that and they're not too happy about people sleeping over here because it's supposed to only be for construction workers being able to have a cup of coffee. So, but uh, the, the, the law in Norway allows you to have construction barracks on a site as, as long as you're doing construction uh, work. Uh, and this is the city center. So. Uh, Part of the, th the, the, ref the, uh, the fixing up that we've done is basically not changing anything. So we've been fixing up the office, which used to be an office. There's a big, uh, big uh, kitchen here that we fixed up. And they want to be, it's going to be like a, where you can get some fast food. And then we have inside the building here. And this is uh, some of the construction we've done inside. Made a new entrance area. And we also built this uh, pretty big stage inside. So uh, last summer at the uh, Liberstad Freedom Festival, when we had all the property owners that came over, we had this fantastic band. They actually don't exist any longer. They're from Oslo. And they came and, and held, held a concert uh, for us in this, uh, in this building. And this is another building where we're planning on having um, a restaurant 
And one of the ideas we got here was maybe to have this type of anarcho graffiti wall. And maybe just as a way to getting some uh, some finance into the project, and we could sort of uh, people could pay I don't know a certain sum to get like one by one meter uh, graffiti thing on, on this big wall, and we could have a lot of uh, cool things going on. So that's just an idea. We haven't put it into into uh, practice yet. So we obviously face a lot of uh, challenges here in this project, and one of them is the public view. We have been fortunate enough that uh, most of the newspapers and, uh, and the, uh, the news in the media have been positive. They don't sort of try to put a negative spin on it in any way, so we're very grateful for that. But a lot of people, uh, some people don't understand it at all. And they go around like speaking with their neighbors about what is this labor style project, then the rumor starts and, and miscommunication and everything. But one of the nice things is that those people actually come up to us to talk with us, most of them. Uh, they just wanted to check by because they were driving around the, the neighborhood or whatever. And some of them, they, they stay all night, all evening, uh, talking with us about philosophy, about anarchism, about uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and everything. It's just fantastic. So uh, most people that come up there and talk with us, they're... Uh, they're when they go back home, they, are, uh, they will evangelize uh, the, the message of, of Liberstad, and that is, that is very, very nice. But politicians, they, they, don't, they don't understand things very well. So when we say that we don't want uh, violent people buying properties in Liberstad, the, uh, the uh, politicians think that we are racists. And they go into the media and they say that we're, this is a selection society. Uh, and, and they, they compare us with, with, with racists, and it's like, oh, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. We have people from everywhere around the world. We only judge individuals. We don't care uh, anything other than that. Uh, you are uh, as an individual. But that has also been, been very hard to actually get the politicians to understand this. And, um, and it's been a change as well in the municipality. Basically, the Liberstad is today established in a municipality called Manadal, which is disappearing because it's joining together with two others. So it's going to be uh, the majority of people that we're going to work with going forward. Uh, it's different kind of people. It's some, some of them are, are the same people, but that's also an issue. Um, zoning plan, it's going to take a lot of work. That's a big thing. But uh, another more important thing is that we're establishing a new society. and. I mean, as it was, men it was mentioned here during the Q&A here, we're all insane, and people think you are crazy, and we are crazy. And this is an insane project. It's, it's just so incredibly huge uh, undertaking. But we, we need to do it. We can't just sit online uh, chatting any longer. So we need to do something. So in regards to establishing a new society, that is an area where I think a lot of you can help and contribute to this project. Was uh, stuff like private law, how to make contracts and agreements, all those things. Uh, we need help from you. So we're, we're going to launch a project to uh, have a collaborative project to come up with what we call the citizens contract, which is uh, I'm not sure who coined it, but it, it is in, from the, in the book uh, "Free Private Cities" by Tadeusz Gebel. So as mentioned, uh, we're not going to have a constitution, but it will still be in this private uh, contract. And we also need to develop alternative methods for what the government does today. Sort of like sewer, uh, we need to have a fire truck, we need to have security, we need to have an emergency room, uh, and all those things. And even though we could rely on the, the government uh, for some of those services, but we also, there are going to be a lot of people here eventually, so we need to have those services locally. In case of a fire, for example, we need to be able to at least uh, help out a little bit initially. And another thing is finan financing all the construction and everything. We have not done any ICO or big, uh, uh, got any big investors helping us out on this project. And there's many reasons for that. Uh, one is that we need to get the zoning plan first uh, accepted uh, and gone through. And then we can maybe go and ask for bigger invest uh, investment. And we know that a lot of the property owners they have some very good ideas about uh, offices and buildings that they want to construct up there. So we know that there's, uh, there's a lot of will uh, to get things uh, going and working up here. 
Another thing is also human, human resources. That's also uh, a thing that uh, uh, there's going to be a problem because we're not that many people. So if anyone want to anyone want to contribute in any way, uh, please uh, feel free to send us an email. So this is the last drone video, or I mean the latest. I have a one at the end as well. So this is from uh, April, and as you can see here. A lot of things have happened in the city center. Uh, this area here, uh, we blew out a little bit of the, the mountain. Uh, or we plan, our plan is to blow the whole thing here to pieces. Uh, but that is obviously also something we need to uh, need to ask the government permission for. Or it's not basically, it's not getting permission. It's more like telling them that what what we're doing. Uh, they're not too happy about. Uh, we have moved this away from here now, but they weren't happy, as I mentioned, that we were storing it in a in a spot that we hadn't uh, asked for permission to, to store those. So that would, um, yeah. So in in the city center here, we've taken some of the mass from the explosion, and we also paid and got a lot of a lot of trucks with gravel coming in there. And uh, yeah. So then, some of the solutions to be able to to counter these challenges, and then the first one is, is going to be very important, and that is the internal market. Same as uh, as here in this this place, it's like I, I didn't know about this before I was uh, invited to speak here, and I mean I'm, I'm getting emotional just being here and seeing all these people uh, in the audience here and and this this few days here. Uh, and all those people using cryptocurrency because we don't have stuff like that in Norway. Uh, I ran the crypto south together with some friends, and we had the 3040 in the first meeting, and then we had 30, and then 20, and then 10, and then the Bitcoin price collapsed, and over there, so we just put it down eventually. But uh, that is one thing. Local production is another thing. We need to produce money straight away. So we're cr creating firewood today. We will also get machinery up there, so we can create pebble and different kinds of sizes of rocks and everything. Uh, and we need to use modern technology, we need to use blockchain technology to counteract some of the public services that the government is controlling today. Uh, one example would be, f for instance, identity. Identity is going to be very important in the, in the society. because You need to be able to track people if you're going to have a legal system up there. And, and other things, if you have doing loans and everything, you need to be able to have a system with, of identity. And that is an area I have a lot of interest and worked a lot with. And one of the things we want to allow people is to be named whatever you want. You can just be the public key of your uh, identity, and that's your name. If you want to do that, you can do that. If you want to have multiple identities, you can do that. If you want to be Donald Duck, you can be that, no problem. Uh, so in terms of uh, internal market, yeah, I mentioned some of this. Uh, We've written a little bit about the website on this, local production, I also mentioned this, some of the things we're doing. One of the things we're planning on doing is, is having, uh, having this uh, indoor uh, industry building production of food using hydroponics. So we can get three, uh, food production 365 days a year. And the nice thing with this is that we, it's going to be local produced. We don't need storage space, we don't need to store the food, we don't need to transport the food. And that is going to be uh, make it possible for us to actually comp compete with the subsidized uh, 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 industry that uh, food production is today. Crowdsourcing is going to be very important. We already received a lot of donations. We had a fun incident. Uh, a guy he sent all his Bitcoin. I think it was about like 13 Bitcoin or something. And we got an email like, oh, I wasn't supposed to send everything. Uh, so obviously, we're nice guys. We, we sent it back to him, and uh, we got it fixed up. Um, so I just want to thank uh, everybody for that, but I just want to pose a question t to all of you. It's like, what do you want to get, receive in return for letting go of your cryptocurrencies? I mean, a I have a lot of friends, and uh, they're hodlers, some of them, and I have a friend. He, he has never used a Bitcoin, and every time he, he buys Bitcoin as a birthday present for his father, but he doesn't use his own Bitcoin, he comes to me, I'm like, can I buy some more Bitcoin from you? I have uh, basically nothing. I've already lost all my Bitcoin twice. So 
That's no fun story. Another idea is like adoption of street names. You could have companies or people or whatever. You could uh, be able to name a street uh, for some sort of uh, payment or whatever. And then City Chain is a product I've worked a lot with, and it's a blockchain uh, for powering what, what I'm calling the smart city platform. So you need to build a lot of services on top of blockchain. And most of those services, we are making it compatible with, with, uh, with Bitcoin. It's not like we, we have no intention of creating a global currency that's going to compete with Bitcoin. That's not the idea at all. But we need to have our own blockchain to be able to innovate and do some of the things that we wanted to do. But we obviously want to support uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well. And when we started this work, this was three years ago, then it wasn't that easy to use a cryptocurrency. And it's still a little bit hard, especially for the average farmer living in rural Norway. They need to be able to use this stuff. And then when they come to Liberstad, they need to be able to buy it easily and use it very easily. But it's not only about the, uh, the consumer, it's also about the merchant. We need to have a merchant system where people can, can be a cryptocurrency merchant and have everything from uh, the finances and everything in, in order. So I'll just quickly skip this, but uh, you can go, you can just Google. Uh, uh, City Chain is actually a, a company in Hong Kong, I think. But uh, if you go to city-chain.org, that's the website, you can learn a little bit more about it. Property registry is also one thing we're going to have on this system. And another important thing is what we're going to have is, is a CC, crypto company registry. It's basically you're going to be able to issue uh, sidechain tokens for your company and then uh, have that identity registered in the system. And that identity will also then be, can be used when you're uh, as a merchant. So when I, one thing you want to do is like when I go and pay stuff and I, I scan it, the QR code or do with NFC. Uh, you're going to see the company logo, you're going to see the company name, and you're going to see all your, the friends in your con contact list who actually approve of this company. So it's a reputation. And this is not only going to be for companies, but it's also going to be person to person. So I can meet a co completely stranger, never met this person before. And uh, we, 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 we do an exchange, and I can easily see that, oh, my other friend is voting for you. So I think that's uh, a very important uh, concept. So City Hub is the uh, the portal into into City Chain. It's just uh, it's a wallet today with uh, a little extra features, but it's going to have a lot more uh, in the end. So this is the last video. Uh, this is uh, recorded uh, I don't know a year or two ago. So we experience very very degrees of snow. Sometimes a lot of snow, sometimes less snow. This is right after the initial snow in December or January that this year. And, um, and uh, if you like sort of uh, seasons, uh, then Norway is a very good place to be because you, you get proper winter, you get proper autumn, spring, and, and summertime. But it's still in the south of Norway, so it's not as cold as the middle or north Norway. And we also don't get uh, uh, that much snow compared to other places. Yeah, let's just skip that. And uh, before I open up for questions, I would just uh, like to s mention that if anyone want to volunteer, please go to Liberstad.com. There's a page where we have volunteering. And I made a special video just asking people if you're a 3D artist, uh, let's say web designer. I'm today responsible for the, all the websites, uh, a lot of coding, and also doing a lot of manual work. So having some support in that would be really nice. And uh, before questions, so I would just like to say uh, thank you for inviting me and thank you for, for coming. Thank you very much. Great project. Uh, but I would like to ask you about some critics. Basically, we heard a lot of times during the presentation we have to ask permission. And the idea of libertinism and crypto anarchism is don't thread on me. So all the construction is very good, and the idea is marvelous, but when and how do you plan to, to protect your rights? 
And that is the key question, because if you're inviting people to come there, yep. it's not the concerts that will attract them. It is protection of these basic rights. And additionally to that question, what I it's not like negative critics, because I understand that you have already faced and made a lot. So can you also explain what it takes to establish such a place? I mean, how you was fighting government before, and how much resources you have required before to do that, what you have already done? Yeah. So the first question, I'll just uh, put back to you. I don't know, but uh, I need you guys here and everyone else in the crypto uh, community to help out with this, figure out how we're going to do it. Like the meeting that John had with Tidus Gable a couple of days ago, three days ago, he mentioned that it's important for us to just stay low now, to just get things going, get things working. And that's also our ID. So we need to accept some sort of force against us at the moment, because it, it, would it, it would never fly if we go to the government before we start this project and say, hey, we want to have a free economic zone here in Norway. Can we get it? It's not go never going to happen. So we need to show that it's actually working. And then we can sort of uh, slowly try and see if there's uh, ways we can uh, improve uh, our freedom in the city. And But uh, as I mentioned, I mean, both me and John were we're uh, very much uh, lovers of uh, the non-aggression principle, and it hurts us whenever we where we need to sort of accept something. But someday, it, it will stop. Uh, maybe it doesn't happen while I'm alive, or maybe we're not children. But someday, people is going to stop. Uh, hopefully, sooner than later. And other parts like. Uh, when we started it, we, we coined something called Libertain, uh, the Libertania project. That's what, what, that's what we started, started with. This was before we even start, thought that we're going to build it. So we were thinking, let's do this open source. Let's share all the information uh, about uh, the planning and everything. Uh, but eventually, we had to stop that, and we um, put it into life, basically. But we need to share, and we are very open with, with everything that's going on. We were also... the. Uh, the people working for the municipality, they've said to us uh, a few times that they were very grateful that we were very open with what we were planning on do, doing and uh, giving them as much information as possible. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, okay, you can hear me. Uh, I have kind of two questions. One builds on top of uh, the previous question, uh, which is uh, what is the actual difference at this current moment uh, in um, what the citizen of the Liberstadt has compared to the other citizens of Nor Norway. And the other one is uh, um, basically, uh, how do you plan on expanding or what's your expansion plan? Uh, do you have some opportunity to buy more land or what's your idea for future? Yeah, two very good questions. And I, the first question I get all the time. And it is something that is very hard to answer. Um, we're not going to get that much more freedom than we already have in Norway. There are loopholes and regulations in the law that sort of that you can utilize as a person, but you 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 you, you utilizing that in a city doesn't give you much benefit. But if you're together as a group, you will get more benefit from that. But one thing would be like if if you and me are trading, and we're doing it in cash, there's no third-party government that can come and say, "Hey, you need to pay 25% VAT on this transaction." So that is one thing, like people up there, they will trade together. And I can't enforce that you need to pl submit your uh, tax report to the government on what you include there, there. If you include the Bitcoin or not, that's not up to me. But I know that if you're trading up there, you will most likely trade with other people who will also use cryptocurrency and then avoid uh, some of the taxes. But uh, it's very hard. It's like we did some research on, on what is possible. That is also wha how we came up with the concept of the internal market. There is uh, there's, uh, uh, regulation today that makes that possible for large organizations to have uh, you know, trading internally. This is uh, tax-free. Uh, but we need to find out uh, what is possible. Another question is expanding. We already had uh, different uh, neighbors, which is mostly farmers, who have approached us and they, they want to sell us more property. Obviously, they want, uh, want a, a price that we're not going to accept, at least not at the current moment. But it's, uh, we have a pretty huge opportunity to expand this very, very big uh, um, in the area. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, thank you for giving this presentation. I was really impressed with all the progress you already made and all your plans that are very big and which I very support. Uh, but besides of the beautiful seasons, why did you pick Norway? Uh, I, I think you like a challenge, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, this is something I've had at least for many years. So uh, I followed the Golf Gulch Chile for uh, a long time. And I had a friend of mine uh, who did something like Free State Initiative. So me and him, we were planning on, we were looking at the whole world, trying to find a place, and even place. I think he, he, he traveled down to Mauritania. It's like 99% Muslim country, and they actually have slaves still down there. And he wanted to get a contract with the government. So we were looking at ideas on using bamboo, how to do food production, uh, desalination of water and everything. And, but it becomes such a big project, huge project. And you need to move with your family or travel a lot. So it's going to be very expensive. So then we figure out, like, why can't we just do it in Norway? Norway is uh, very, it's a pretty functional society. And the fun things, like people, as I mentioned initially here, is like uh, a lot of people say that Norway is such a good country. A lot of Norwegians says that, but I just counter it with, we can't make it better. Let's try to make it better. Let's see if there's other models that can work and make things better. So. Uh, when we en ended up deciding on Norway, we figured out it's fantastic being in Norway because we have a lot of forest here. We can use that. It's a product we can sell as a product we can use. We have clean water in all of Norway. It's just fantastic uh, clean uh, drinking water everywhere. Uh, and then you also have, it is a small country. There's five million people living in Nor Norway. You can go anywhere and there, there's no people, just in the cities almost. Uh, but you, you can go to the most crazy place and there's people living there. And that's also pretty fun. Uh, but Norway is one of the countries uh, after Japan that has the least amount of police per citizen. So it's like, I can go a full week and I don't see a single cop car or a single cop. Try doing that in New York. There's at least four on each subway. It's just horrible. So that is some of the benefits, uh, benefits uh, from it. And also selecting an area that was pretty far from the main city, that's also going to open up more opportunities for allowing the regulators to approve it, because it's going to be much harder to, to build a new construction very close to a city. But it's much easier. We don't have neighbors and, and all those things to, 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 to be concerned about. So time is running. We have time for one more question. Hi, thanks for your thanks for your talk. Um, what is your current policy on technological, biological, and physical weapon? On physical weapon and I, I didn't get the, the first two ones. Uh, technology as a weapon, like physical oh yeah, weapon yeah. as a weapon, and biological weapon as a weapon. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are actually. Uh, they're uh, surprised when I tell them that Norway is one of the m most gun-rich countries in the world. Norwegians love guns. We have a lot of guns in Norway. But it's, uh, we have a, a long history and tradition and culture for, for hunting. And that is why we also have a lot of guns. So it's fairly easy, easy to, to get a gun in Norway. Uh, and a pistol as well. But you need to be active in a club. You need to have the uh, proper sort of training and license. I myself uh, um, I shoot pistol now. I, I grew up shooting, shooting rifles. But uh, uh, carry limit, uh, carry gun in Norway is not legal. I would li love to, to allow people to, to carry gun, but as a civilian, you're not allowed. There's only one uh, position in Norway that is civilian and uh, allowed to carry a gun, and that is the security guards at uh, the Norwegian bank. That's the central bank of Norway. They are the only ones allowed to carry gun. And um, policy, I mean, I myself, I think uh, anyone should be able to buy uh, nukes in self-defense. Why not? I'm not going to stop them. <laughs> so, so uh, we don't we don't have uh, any policies around uh, software as as a weapon, basically. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, I'll be around. Have some interviews afterwards, but uh, I'll be around here uh, the rest of the day.